So hopefully, um, yeah, so hopefully everyone can see this presentation. Your screen and audio is broadcast. Excellent. So really what the idea of um, this session is to try and give really an overview of what happens perhaps in a typical week um, for a student in the MD. So we're talking from, from my aspect of it, I've just introduced myself. Um, so my name is Michael, I'm an, um, an academic immunologist in the College of uh, Medicine and Public Health. So part of my um, academic job is to deliver <clears throat> the immunology content and, and topics in the undergraduate programs that we have at the university and the college, but also in the MD. So I um, look after two weeks in the first year, first semester of the MD um, around the immune defense aspects and also immunopathology. So what I'll be presenting in the next uh, few minutes really is yeah, the week in the life of, an, of a, an MD student when they're approaching the immunology content and, and the sort of way we, we use mixed modalities and, and different approaches really to, um, yeah, to get across the concepts of immunology and um, you know, ground, give people a grounding in, in their immune system and the defenses um, that it produces, but also uh, pathology, perhaps when things go wrong. So my, my research area is in autoimmunity, which is obviously an extension of uh, immunity. So that is where um, people's own immune system is really targeting their own cells and tissues in an aberrant way, um, causing uh, inflammation generally. So you might be familiar with diseases such as type 1 diabetes or lupus, um, scleroderma or rheumatoid arthritis, those are all autoimmune um, diseases. So I have a co-host who may be joining in at some point, but um, she may do her anatomy week, um, perhaps a demonstration week and in another session on Zoom. So we'll see whether she, she patches in. So let's go here. Let's start really with a little bit of grounding in the MD. So as, I've, as I said, I'm talking really about year one, but as you can see here, the MD, which is a four year program, um, obviously has aspects to it, including um, the component that I'll talk about today called knowledge of health and illness. Now this aspect, this, this block, which runs through the first two years is really giving students the grounding in, of um, sort of the, the systems of the body. Um, in other words, the knowledge of how the organs the, and the responses and systems, the cells and tissues of the body keep things in alignment, keep health, keep people healthy, how, how you grow, how you develop over your lifetime, how you age, um, how you protect yourself from pathogens, for example, how your cardiovascular system works, your gastrointestinal system works. And of course, we incorporate aspects of anatomy, physiology, um, you know, functional concepts, um, case-based approaches to, to explain and demonstrate the phenomenon that we're talking about. Um, and also the pathology, in other words, the disease states as well. So I'll talk to you a little bit more detail about this in terms of um, the sort of curriculum that we're doing. So if we break it down to this KHI module, you'll see here that um, we're looking really at um, the first two semesters of the year one, in other words, semester one and two. So knowledge of health and illness really starts off with a great big block of seven weeks on human homeostasis. So that is re really talking about the balancing the ions and proteins of the body, the um, hormone secretion and things. In other words, how does our body keep itself in a normal state, um, keep everything regulated, everything running. Um, that then leads into a module of nine weeks duration known as um, immunology, defense and microbes or I IMD. So that's the part really where immunology becomes um, and inflammation, those sort of aspects are, are taught. Um, students then go on to other blocks, for example, in the cardiovascular, respiratory, renal, or genetics aspects. Um, they then also start their, their um, serious and more formal anatomy sort of dissections and trainings in the second half of year one. Across the base here, you can see here we have, we have approaches such as team-based learning, um, which is integrated uh, throughout these modules. So in other words, students will use, um, be put into teams and use that team structure 
um, to approach some assessment pieces as they go through um, the KHI modules. So basically weekly, we have little mini tests that say um, at both an individual and a team level um, for students to challenge their knowledge against. So yes, we have um, lots of concepts across um, KHI, but we are testing weekly um, to give students an idea about how well they're handling that content and how they're doing in, in the course itself. So I'll be talking exclusively really for the next little bit about one particular week of these nine weeks, which comes about two weeks into the, um, this block. Um, students get the first two weeks really to, to get some understanding around inflammation, the general principles of the inflammatory response in the body. Um, following on from that, also the damage that perhaps inflammation can do if it's unchecked as well. So um, they then move into immunology, which is my area. Um, more specifically, um, looking at how we, we really mount things like antibody responses and T cell responses against pathogens. In other words, the adaptive immune response. So KHI is all about setting up a foundation of knowledge in students. So really you're coming out of, this, of these experiences, understanding um, the basic physiological aspects of a system of the body, such as the immune system, um, why we have it, you know, obviously what challenges we have in our environment as a living entity against um, obviously trying to protect our internal spaces um, from pathogens. Um, what can happen when things go wrong? We, we need to control our immune system. It's incredibly powerful. It's capable of killing pathogens. It's also capable, of course, of damaging our own body if it's not kept under check. So the pathophysiological aspects of the immune response are also incredibly important um, to understanding how the immune system functions. That leads into things like immunodeficiency, what happens when... For example, someone's immune system is not acting correctly or is in poor functioning state, or if they're born with a genetic aberration where they're missing parts of their immune system, for example. And on the other side of that, we have the hypersensitivities, um, things like autoimmune diseases and allergies, which are really um, inappropriate um, immune uh, responses against uh, either something in your environment which is benign or in your tissues and targets in your own body, for example. This looks really complicated, but if you look across, you've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and a general sort of a timeline. And you can see what happens with students um, over the week. They get a real experience of different things. So for me, they will be getting sort of lectures here um, on the Tuesday afternoon and the Wednesday afternoon. Thursday and, and leading into a sort of a double lecture and lectorial period here. Um, they'll also get, if you have a look here, we've got the MD progress test, which is an interesting thing. So um, students are actually given, sorry, a, a test along the way called a progress test um, that they use to match their actual progression in the course again. So progress testing happens several times during the year. Um, and students are, are pitching themselves against a, a sort of a standard to see where they're, where they're fitting um, the actual learning. You can also think things other than the lectures, you can see, see um, things like a workshop and also a practical session. So we go from the lectures to a case-based workshop where, where we look at a, you know, a case around someone perhaps with an infection and discuss, um, you know, based on what you've learned in the lectures, what might be happening as a group. And you then go to the gross anatom anatomical sort of practical where you go and look at the immune system in terms of um, growth pathological specimens. Um, we have wet specimens, of course, and you can trace um, the lymph nodes, the lymphatic and, um, and drainage systems of the body, where are the major parts where lymph nodes are, are, are mostly concentrated around the gut and the respiratory system, where we get most of our pathogens, of course. Um, so you can get to explore the, the growth aspects of the immune system. And finally, as you can see on Friday, there's a team-based learning application and, and testing session as well. So teams get together and, and sort of solve many cases um, as a group um, with a clinical uh, person coming along to demonstrate those. 
So I just put them down here. Lots of things are represented throughout the week. So you've got the KHI, you've got um, that students will be studying alongside immunology. They'll be doing um, documentation, some skills, skills development. And we try and align, if we're doing lectures in immunology, we'll try and align things if you're doing um, skills development around palpating lymph nodes, for example. So getting to recognize where lymph nodes are swollen um, or people are having drainage problems through um, the lymph system, for example. So we're trying to match um, the clinical skills um, with the, the content, the lectures and the theme for the week, which would be immunology. It may even include some, some, um, some breathing sound analysis. In other words, if, if someone has a pneumonia, for example, how can you tell that they have fluid deep in their chest through, through listening to their breathing, for example? So in other words, developing some of the skills for assessing um, aberrant immune function. So for the week, really, from, from my aspect, what you would have was would be several lectures. You can see on Tuesday and Wednesday, there's these electives, um, then tying it in with the role of lab testing. So in other words, if we, if we have an immune system that needs to be assessed, how do we use lab tests and what tests are available to, to assess the immunopathology of that setting? Um, and then moving into this adaptive immune workshop type setting um, where we're doing the practicals and other things. So um, in the current state, of course, and even before this, we were doing mixed delivery. So often we will do a live lecture with a collaborate or a recording. Um, some of the practicals are both live um, attendance and or collaborate as well. So some of our international students at the moment are doing some of these modules um, by collaborate, for example, um, because they're offshore. Okay, so here's some of the lectures and we're really just showing an example of what goes on. We'll be, I'll be trying to demonstrate, for example, how our immune system tackles a pathogen, what sort of cells are doing the initial engagement with the pathogen, um, what do they do once they've sort of engaged with and, and, and eaten a pathogen? They break it up in little bits and they go and talk to um, the adaptive immune cells. We then generate things like antibodies. Um, and we talk about aspects of what are the limits of our immune system response. In other words, you know, in the current setting for SARS, for example, why is it that we don't have antibodies against SARS, uh, COVID 2 now, if we haven't been exposed to that previously, why wouldn't we have protection? Those sort of aspects. And then what sort of things you know, make good targets for our immune system? Those sort of aspects are all incorporated into the lecture styles. We then do a case-based approach. And in this case, for example, we're looking at immunodeficiency. This, this um, person has, um, for example, recurrent infections that are staphylococcus in, in nature and they have an aberration in their neutrophil motilities. In other words, they can't get neutrophils to the site of those bacterial infections. So they have ongoing um, abscess development um, due to a lack of immune response uh, that's appropriate for the target. We follow that case, we look at the serological picture, and we try and identify you know, why things are going wrong in this individual, um, whether it be a hereditary or a secondary effect. Um, driving the immunodeficiency. And lastly, just um, the gross anatomy. This is part of um, the, the practical, really looking at the various um, components of the immune system, how interactive and interlaced it is perhaps with um, other aspects of the body and, and particularly things like the gastrointestinal tract or um, the respiratory tract where we need lots of um, immune cells present in the various uh, lymphoid tissues and lymph nodes of the body. So um, those are just some aspects of how we would deliver an, an, an immunology week, for example, um, just to give you an idea of the type of things that, that in a general week um, students might be doing, this mix of, of lectures, um, workshops, tutorials, case-based approaches, and um, sort of practicals as well. So quite a diverse thing, a range of things occurring in that week. So I will stop sharing at this point and yeah, and come back to perhaps um, mentioning that we will be able to answer questions back in the Flinders room. Uh, I know that we're on a tight timeline here, so um, probably a chance for a question or two here, but certainly if you do have questions, um, yeah, certainly back in the, in the main Flinders room would be 
the place to to come along we'll be answering those there yeah uh thanks michael uh that was fantastic um i don't uh see any questions off the top um uh, off the top in the chat uh there's a question from uh, kate i don't know if you can see it um are the progress so the tests for students? Oh, so, so yes, so so we have, um, though the progress tests are really important now, some of them are formative and some of them are summative. So it's a mix really. Um, so some of the tests are getting you ready and getting you in the framework and, and getting used to the type of testing. And really overall though, they are used for you to guide yourself. We have the self-regulated learning approach. So most of that testing is, is to get you really as a student to understand your strengths and weaknesses as, as a student and allow you to adapt accordingly. Block style schedule in general, yes it is. We do use major systems of the body in general um, in blocks. We don't sort of pick apart individual organs and go for those we use sort of generalized. It might be cardiovascular or renal or immune defense, for example, as blocks, yes. Uh, we actually have a fair bit of time, uh, given that you've got the next session as well. Um, okay. And um, well, hopefully, um, we're, wait, we're actually waiting for Boudicca. I wonder if... Um, yeah, we can take a break as well if you want to just... Yeah, we'll just try and get uh, Boudicca to patch in. Sure. So he has okay. a 15-minute presentation as well. Yeah, it is. Well, Correct. Perfect. Okay, we'll take a break. Uh, thank you. If anyone has any questions, please head to the Flinders booth. I know Julie's joining us as well from the international office, uh, Julie Inglis. So hi, Julie, and thank you. And um, lots of uh, people on hand at the Flinders booth as well as Oztrek. So thanks everyone for joining. Really appreciate your time and enjoy your evening or morning, depending if you're in Adelaide.